Okay. Start so that you can be. Okay, 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 okay. We want to record. We want to record the session and share the link with so okay. our colleagues who will not be able to. All right. Yeah. I think I've done. Okay, okay, okay. So I think you have been made a co-host. Okay. I think. It, I think it has now been successful. Okay. We can. We can make. Progress. Yeah. We, All right. We can make progress now. Sure. All right. So now I'm going to share my screen. So prior to now, when Sir Olua Shegu told me I'm going to take it last, I decided to create an article or to write an article instead about a okay. static like this. So I'm going to share it on the chat. I guess okay. anybody wants to access it. Yes. Because That's I, love, I love having a kitchen. Okay. Room. Yeah. So let me. That's good. Let me, yeah, let me open my camera now. I believe you can all see my screen. You are here to share your screen. Oh, I'm sharing already. Oh, let me re let me stop presenting and present again. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, that would be good. So great. please, once once you you see it, you let me know. Okay. Are you seeing the screen now? Because I don't know. If others are seeing it, I'm yet to see it. Okay, please. I'm the seeing the screen. Okay. So maybe you check. I don't really know. Yeah, it's loading now. Okay, that's good. All right. Um, so today we'll be looking at um, static libraries, right? But before we start, because I want the okay. class to be an interactive class, right? Because that way yeah. we we'll all get to learn. Yes, I, I love interactive class. So uh, I want to ask, can anybody like tell us or help us what is actually static libraries? Like what are static libraries? When somebody says static library, what? What do you think a static library is like your own definition or your own way? Hello, can I say something? Yes, please, you can. Yeah, uh, the way I understand static libraries is yeah. once you have written your program, okay. it goes to the execute to be, it needs to be executed, right? Or yes. it goes through stages of going into the assembly code, okay. then then after the linking phase. So usually, uh, yeah. the as you have written your your program, there are some yeah. functions you use. For example, uh, the print function. Then there are also your own functions. You formulate it can be a function of adding two numbers it can be a function of, of multiplying yes now uh these functions for static libraries you you create a file for them then uh during execution you link them to the file so they they must be with that uh okay they must be contained in your folder or, or file all the time okay yes okay so oh, beautiful that's very good so um anybody else anybody else down to help us Ah, where's everywhere? Just quiet. Oh, it's all right. Since all of you decide to stay mute. Now, when you talk about static libraries, right? Before we even talk about li uh, static libraries, let's even look at what is a library. Now, if, if we relate uh, this library in C with our standard library, 
you observe that there are some similarities between them. Now, for instance, our normal libraries, you find out that a library is a place where if you go there, yeah, you get a collection of books, right? And those books, you can have different kind of books, different sort of books that range from science, from art, from fiction, and the rest. So, so also, library two in C is a file that contains several object files. And then these several object files, right? All of them will now be compiled into just a single file, just like how all the books are being compiled or are being gathered and put inside the library. The library is just a place, one place you go to. But inside that one place you go to, you find out that you have so many number of books there. So it's almost the same thing too with our C library. When you hear of C library, it's simply a single file that contains all the files. But these other files that this single file is containing, they are called object files or object code. Now, if you, if you understand uh, during uh, C compilation, you know, there are different uh, levels of compilation. So who can help us? What are the levels of compilation, C compilation? That's if you are using GCC to compile your program, what are the levels of compilation? Assembly, pre-processing and linking. Okay, okay, good. Now, you find out that in all of these levels of compilation, each of them have what they produce. But the one we are interested in here is the one that will produce a code, a C code as an object file. And that object file can also be known as a machine language or object code. So now you find out that that's what your assembler does at the assembly stage. At the assembly stage, what you produce or what you have are object files. So now a library in C is something that combines all, you can have more than two object files. It could be 10, it could be 20, it could be 100 and compile them into a single file. So that is what library in C is all about. Now, these libraries in C, they are of two types. There's the static and there's the dynamic. But for this our class now, we'll just concentrate on the static. Yes. So you can actually go through this um, article in your free time. Yeah, but although I believe that most of us have even read on static libraries, already, but you can still like take your time and go through it like that so just like i said we'll be concentrating on static libraries right now if you look at here you see static libraries are a collection of object files linked into the program at the linking phase of compilation and are not relevant during runtime it is not relevant during runtime simply because when a program is linked with a static library the linker copies the object files from the library into the executable file and what this means is that this program will have its copy of the code and data from the library. So what they are trying to say here is that, and that's the difference between static library and dynamic library. Static library always comes in, right, before runtime. Why dynamic library works during runtime? And I believe what we understand what runtime is, that's at the uh, at the point where your program is running. So what happens is that in this static library, before your program will even start running, it will first look through your static libraries. Then after lo looking through your static libraries, it will check for the object codes it needs. And when he sees those object codes, what he does is that it copies the whole code into your main program, right? copies it into your main program, then at the linking stage of your program, you know, we have four, we have uh, four process of compilation in the C. You have your preprocessor, that's the stage where your comments are out. Then you have your compiler, your compilation, then you have your assembler, then the linker. Now the linker, that is when all these, your object code files will now be brought into your program before it will now finally link. So after linking, then you have your full program, which you can actually execute. That's your executable program. Yes. So, so that's what 
uh, occurs at the background of your static library. Yes. So now, okay, let's see. What did they say here? They say static libraries are used to share code between multiple programs. This helps to save time and effort in developing programs as there will be no need to rewrite code or data. Now, what they are trying to say here is that, okay, let's take, for instance, right? You have, uh, let's say, a program. Let's say Vim test dot c let's look at this program and then you know let's say you want to use your your printf right you know your printf function you use it to print something to standard output now you find out that for you to use your printf you have to do something which is what you have to include let's say stdio dot h right then here you can now just come and say int main void this is just, I'm just citing an example. Then you can say print F. You say this is code 3B. Then since we say our main should return an int, we'll just return a zero and then we'll close it. So now if you look at it, you'll find out that here we are calling print F as a function. You know, this is how you call a function. You either call it depending on the function whether it's taking an argument or not. But of course, we know that our printf takes an argument, and whatsoever argument it takes, that's what it processes. So now we are using our printf here. But have you ever thought about it? Because you know, for you to use a function, you have to define the function. So have you ever thought where is this function defined that makes it possible for me to be able to use it in this program? Now this function is being defined inside of this our header file which is called stdio.h so it's also the same scenario let me not say the same but similar scenario with static library anytime you are making use of static library right you don't need to code the function inside your main code so let's say we have 10 different uh, programs right that want to use printf instead of we to code printf for the first program code printf for second, code printf for fourth, fifth, and to the tenth one. Instead of we coding 10 different printf functions inside of those our program, what we just need is just to make, to turn that function into a library. Now, once we turn it into a library, let's say uh, the function we need in all the 10 files, let's say there are like five different functions, and the five functions, those 10 programs need those five functions. So instead of we like running those five uh, functions, defining them inside all those 10 programs separately, what we just need to do is to turn them into a library. Then after, by doing so, we can now easily attach this library to those 10 files. So it's more like you are having one library that can be used in 10 different files at the same time. So that is one advantage of our static libraries, right? So um so i don't know if anybody has a question or anybody has uh, any additional explanation right so at this point I, I'm, I'm going to appreciate you have a question you have an additional something you want to add to what we have done thus far like that so me i'll start calling names oh son this class is quiet like this like Ha. He. Wait. Hope you, hope you guys are hearing me. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So, is there any question? But first of all, hope like we know what object files are. At this point, let me, it's, it's better I ask. So what are object files? Let me even ask somebody, you know, so that it will not be as though somebody's looking at it, ah, which is object file again? One I know is C file. <laughs> Gideon, please, can you explain object files? Can you emphasize on that? all right good now just like i said hmm? 
you know, in C compilation, there are different uh, levels of compilation. Let me see if I can assess. I think I've written on compilation before. So let me see if I can assess it. So that I'm going to show you the diagram. Probably you have forgotten or something like that. So there are different levels of compilation before your C file finally gets compiled into an executable program. It goes through um, levels of compilation, which of course I asked when the class started. And then somebody told us that at least we have four compilation process. So uh, I, are you sure this thing is here? I just hope it's here. Uh-huh, good. So the C compilation process, right? We have your source file. Now, if you look at this file, what we have done here, let me increase the, I don't know why it doesn't want to increase. What we have done here, right? This is a source file. This one you have seen here, this code we just wrote here. This is called a source file. So if I save it, ls. Now, this is a source file. Uh, uh -huh. So this is a source file, test.c. This is a source file, a source file that contains our code, our C code, right? Now, by the time you say gcc, then test.c, right? What is happening now is that what will happen, what this GCC is going to do is that it's going to take this source file, that's this test.c that we have now, and it's going to feed it through these four processes. First, it will take it through the preprocessor. Now, through this preprocessor process, what is going to happen? These three things are going to happen, which is what? It will remove comments that are in your source file. That's all the comments. I believe we know comments. Comment are those part of your code where the compiler or the translator we ignore. Whenever it comes, it gets to that point, it will just ignore it and continue, right? So for instance, when you have something like this, let's say here, I say, this is our first program. Right now, this one here is a comment. So by the time it's taking it through the pre-processing stage, right? It will remove this comment from this our source file. Then two, include header files in the source code. So what will happen is that it will go through this stdio.h. It will look for all the functions that are defined inside this header file. Then it will now replace this line here with all those functions that are defined inside this header file. That's another thing it's going to do. Then third, expand or replace macro name with code. So I don't know if code 18 have done macro. I, I don't know, but macro is, let's say for instance, right? I want to, there's a, something I want to use in my code, right? And that thing, I want it to appear in more than one place in my code. And that thing has a possibility of maybe in the nearest future, I might likely change it. So instead of me coming all over my code and writing that thing and the value, I can just use it as a macro here. Now, how do you use a macro? You use your asterisk, your hash, then you use define, then your macro name. Now, let's say what I want to use is uh, maybe message, right? Now, you, you use this one defined to show that it's actually a macro. Then the variable of the macro, you make sure it's capital letter. That does not mean if you use small letter or any other case, it will not work. It will work. The only difference is that at this point in time now, for you to, so, to make your code understandable so that if another developer should come and look at or look through your code, you, you will know that it's actually a macro. It's advisable to use capital letter all through. It's more like a good coding practice. So let's say the message we want is, this is code drive. Let's say in the nearest future, we might come and change, maybe by the time we change name of code tribe, we might come here. Now, instead of going through all the places that this is code tribe is appearing, we might just as well come define it here, 
after defining it here now instead of using this one this is code tribe what we'll be using instead is this one message so we'll come down here right now of course this is a string right so we'll do um percentage s then so that new line so that it will print a new line after that then we'll now put our message now by the time what will now happen is that you see three say expand or replace macro name with code so at this pre-processing stage what will happen is that by the time this code is running once it gets to this point it will check here it will now see that okay message it will see that message here is a my macro it will now check what is the value of this uh, macro name the value is this is code tribe so it will replace it here. Sorry, since it's going to replace it here, I don't need to define this my string S. Yes, it's going to be like this. Since it's going to replace it. So now, once it gets to this point, it will now check. It's not say that our message is a macro name that have been defined here. It will now pick the value of message, which here is this is code tree, and then you will place it here. So that is, those are the three things that happen in the pre-processing. So after pre-processing, you will come down, and there are different uh, flags in which you can use to stop your file at a particular phase. But I, I will not go. Uh, I will not go there because actually this class is not meant for C compilation. It's meant for static library. I just want to explain object files. So after that, it will now move to compiling. That's compilation phase. Now, what happens in this compilation phase? Let's see. Okay, it says. The compilation code is the second process of the whole compilation process. Here, the compiler takes the pre-processed file as input and converts it to assembly code. Now, this assembly code, right, is a kind of readable, human readable form of object code. It looks like object code, but it's an object code that human beings can actually read. Although saying human beings can read it does not mean you can actually read it, like understand it very well. You understand? But it's something that if you settle down and look at it, you can easily understand and explain what is going on. So that is what this compiling does. And this is an example of uh of this thing, your assembly code. You can see it, LC1 string. You see, it's trying to tell you that this one here, the value of pi, is trying to tell you that it's a string and things like that global main because this function now as it is here this main function is a global function so it's trying to tell you there is a global and type that's what is the type of the form of main it's telling you that the type is function that's why you are seeing here it's showing at function so it's actually a readable form of object code but it is not object code it is assembly code right so the next step is called assembly now this is where our interest is they say this is the third step in the compilation process. Here, the assembler takes the assembly code as input and converts it into machine code. So they, this machine code can also be referred to as object code. So any time you hear object code, is, it also means machine code, right? And this is the kind of code that your computer understands. You understand? So is that's why you see they call it machine code because it's a code that computer understands. In fact, that machine code is something is not even readable. This is how it looks. You see how it looks. So you see something like this is not even like from here, you can't really tell what is happening. The only thing you can actually say here is probably here the value of pi equal to percentage f. But apart from that, I don't think there's anything else here that you will be able to read. And maybe this GNU, GNU stack dot no, but apart from that. Right, so this is how an object code looks like, and an object could always end with dot o. So take note of that. So uh, I hope you understand what object code is now. Object file is. Who asked that question? Please, oh, I need yeah. comments. Yeah, it's, it's someone, someone. I'm the one okay. that asks. Okay, so are you okay? Yes, very much. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you. So this linking, let me explain a little bit on linking because we'll be making use of linking to very well because anytime you have a library file, right? 
the library file don't go through all this compilation process. You know, we say what happened is that first you go through the preprocessor or preprocessing, right? Then down next your compiler, your assembler. So your one advantage of having a library file is that it doesn't pass through these three methods: preprocessing, compiler, assembler. It's immediately, it's immediately like it's being fed directly into the linker to produce an executable and it's understandable why because the the files that we are going to use to compile into library file they are all object code so and for you to become an object code you have to go through preprocessor compiler right then down to assembler so since the library file itself is made up of these object code files that means once you are using a library file it doesn't have to go through all these ones because the object code contained in the library file have already gone through this process here so you are just feeding it into the linker for the linker to now link it up with the main file and produce an executable for you that's something you can run as a program so that is why you see that for you to create a library you first have to create object uh, files object code then from there you create your library then that your library will now be feed into the linker and your, your linker will now convert everything into an executable file that's into a file that you can actually run on your computer system. So that is how object files work and the rest. So just like I said, the only difference between static libraries and dynamic libraries is that static libraries are being run before, just before runtime, right? Uh -huh. Because of course, you know, here, this your linking stage is not your executable, is not your, your runtime stage, right? It's, at this linking stage that you now have runtime in which your program is now converted into an executable file, right? So, and this static library is being feed in the process of linking. That's when it's being brought in, into the whole thing. Uh -huh. But your dynamic now, your dynamic actually occurs during runtime. So when you, you get to dynamic library, you see all that. Let me not, uh, let's just focus on what we have today. So now, the first thing we are going to look at is, okay, we have talked about static libraries in C and what they are. Now, how do we even create a static library, right? So now for you to create a static library, there's what is being called an archiver, A-R-C-H-I-V-E-R, short form of A-R. Now, this archiver command is what helps us in creating a static library, right? So let's see, they say this program is also used for one creating static libraries which are archive files so your static libraries themselves are archive, file, archive files then two it says modify object files in the static library we will still look at these all these ones then three list the names of object files in the library that's the nm and ar commands can also be used to list symbols stored in a static library so now let's look at this example now an example of creating a static library. Now, what I want us, what I want to do here, right? I'm going to save this file. Now, what I want to do here is I want us to create a library. Now, what this library is targeted at is that it's going to contain files for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus. Here, I did for only four, but for this our class, I'm going to add modulus. So, what we want to do is to create a program, right? In which, let me show you uh, where it is, the final program. I want, like, I want us to create a program like this, right? In which we can actually call our add, our add, our subtract, our multiply, our divide, and our modulus function, right? But I want us to do it in such a way, the functions, that's the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, the division, and the modulus function will be in a library, in a static library. Like we we'll convert them to a static library. In as much as any function that we want to implement addition, subtraction, multiplication, division in, is just for us to link it together with the static library file. And then we'll, we are going to have an executable that can actually make use of those functions. So that is what I want us to do. Although I know that the one you are being given in your intranet is quite different, yes. But this I want us to put it into practical use. I think that way it will benefit us more, right? 
So uh please nobody is saying anything. No, if you know there's any place you don't understand, you can always please reach out here. And if maybe one person, one or two persons can maybe unmute and so that time to time you give responses, I appreciate so that it will not be as if I'm only <laughs> I'm the only one here. All right. So now, if you remember what we said when we started, we say for you to create a library file, you have to create it from object files. So it means that anything we want to create or want to turn into a library file, we have to first create it as a normal code file, our C code file. And after creating it as our normal C code file, before we now compile everything into a library file. So now, just like I said, I want us to be able to create an addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus function. So that's all we are going to do now. So we are going to start with addition function. So I'll use vim calc add dot c. So for this addition now, right? Now we don't need to to include anything here because this what we are going to what we need or what we want to use all these functions is to bring them together and create a library. So I will not really use all those include and the rest because we are not doing anything inside the function. We are only like carrying out what that function is supposed to do. So for the addition function, of course, what we want to do is to return an integer, right? So our function, we have to be named using int since we will be returning an integer. Now, what is the name of our function we want to add? Now, what are we adding? We are adding two integers. So let's say int A and int B, right? Now, since we are adding, what do we want this function to return? We want it to return A plus B, which of course A plus B will be an integer. Then we close. Now, this is our addition function. So we will save. Next, the next one, we want subtraction. So vim calc, I'll use the word sub, S-U-B. Sorry, underscore. So for this one, to we have int sub, int A, int B, and then we want it to return subtraction. So return A minus B. So the next one, we have multiply. So we have int mol int a int b. And then what is he returning? Is returning a multiplied by b. The next one, we have our divide int b. We are taking it int a int b. And then we'll return A divided by B. Although for this one, we are, we, are, we are supposed to check if B is zero, there should. So let's check. Let's see if B, you know, so that we'll not have issues of infinity. If B is zero, then we should just return, um, or we'll just exit, uh, exit with one. Else, we should return A divided by B. Then, lastly, we have our modulus. So, int mod int A int B return A modulus B. So do we miss anything? Add, subtract, multiply, divide, modulus. I don't think we missed anything. So let's check. So we have our add, we have our divide, we have our modulus, we have our multiply, we have our subtract. For now, we don't need this test file, this test here. So we'll just remove it. So we have this. These are all our files. Now, after creating, the first thing we need to do now is to create a, an object file for each of these ones, right? Now, how do we create an object file? It's very easy. It's still from our 
GCC compilation. But now, the only thing here is that if we come to this co compilation, right, you know, we say the object file are being gotten from the assembly stage of compilation. Now, and how? How do you get uh, object files from the assembly stage? You see how you get it. You use the command GCC flag C. You use the flag C option, you see? To just stop the compilation process at the assembly stage, you should use the GCC command with the flag C option to stop the assembly process. So now it means that and here we have how many files? How many files do you want to get their object uh, code from? One, two, three, four, five. So for we to get the object code, we have GCC flag C. Now, since instead of we entering their names one after the other, if you check, all the files are having at the end dot .c, dot .c, dot .c, dot .c. And if you check, all of them, they are beginning with calc, calc, calc. So you can go two ways. Either we say all the files starting with the word calc. Now, what this asterisk does is that it will go through all this present directory we are in now. It will look for all the files that begin with calc. And that's when it does, those are the files it's going to compile into object code. Or we go by the method of all.c. It's going to go through all the files and then all the files that are .c is going to now convert them into object code. So whichsoever, we are going to get the same result. So I'm going to use this one, the one that at the beginning, it starts with calc and I'll enter. Okay, so you see they are giving me warning, warning, implicit declaration of function, exit. So they are saying I have to include this to be able to use exit. So uh, permit me to re-edit the diff, the diff file. Let me just remove this one. Or let me include the, what did they want us to include? Hmm? Is it STD lib? Yes, STD lib. Okay, good. So let's just include it. Let's save ourselves the stress. So now, this one, that is saying conflicting types for diff have int. Uh, what is this one saying? Previous declaration of diff. Ah, is there any way we have declared diff before? See, the thing actually worked too. You see problem. <laughs> okay. Voila. Let me just remove everything self here. <laughs> so permit me to remove all the files, all the object code files. So which is dot o. Yeah. Good. So now GCC flag C, we want to convert them to uh, object code, enter, ls. Now, as you can see, you find out that for each of these C file, an object code has been created for them. This, this, and this. So it means that we are done with step one by creating object code, right? Now, step two, okay, good. Now, step two, it says, since we now have all our source uh, source code C files in a directory, we are going to define the function prototype of the functions that are inside of the C source code file. Now, we need to create, now, it's very, very important, right, that anytime you are working with objects, uh, you are working with uh, static libraries, all the functions you are going to be including into your static library, all the functions, you have to include their prototype inside of a header file. So, and what are the prototype? For instance, if we check this addition, right? For this add function, this is the function prototype. The function prototype is simply the return type of the function, the name of the function, the parameter of the function. That is what the function prototype is. Yes. So now, we are going to create a header file. So we'll name it Vim, let's say calc. This is what we want to do is to calculate dot H, right? Now, 
for a header file is a good practice to always check and how do you use to check for a header file you use if not define header file right define header file so what this one will do is that if not defined as anything that is not defined you should define it but once it's defined there's no need for it to define it so it will avoid you having to copy some code more than once into a file let's say now you, you, you want to you are imputing this header file into a code that and the code itself has standard uh, input and output and inside this your header file too you have included standard input and output header file now what this one will do is that it will prevent the one from inside the header file it will prevent it from executing inside that same file since the file already has the standard input and output uh, uh this thing header file already so that's one advantage of it so now for the prototype for the add we have int add int a int b so this is the prototype for the subtract i think we have five one two three uh -huh. so for the subtract we have sub for the uh the next one multiply we have more for the divide we have div and for the modulus we have mod now one of the things you are going to need because in our program we are going to be printing out uh the result from each of these one addition subtraction so we need to include our std io header file and maybe we should just include Although I don't think at this point is useful, our std live dot h, but I don't think it's going to be useful in this uh, program. And then we are going to end it. End if that's end if right. So this is our header file. Now let's see. We have created a header file. Now the next thing we need to do, right? Uh, let's see. Next step. Okay, you say it's now time to create our static library. So we have created our header file, we have created our object code, each of the functions we have, we have created each of them, their individual object code. So the next thing now is to create a library. Now, this library, what does it involve? It involves packing all the object code files into a single file. That's our calc add.o calcdiv.o, calcmode.o, calcmod.o, calcsub.o. Everything, we are going to in include them into just a single file. So that is what we want to do now. Now, how do we create a static library? You create a static library using this command. Remember when we started, we say the archiver, which is known as AR, the archiver command, which is known as AR. That's what is being used. So you use AR flag rc now what is this r r tells it in case there are older object files they should be replaced with newer object files if available why c tells ar to create the library if it doesn't exist so what this c does is to tell this command that kai this library wants to create it does not exist though so since it does not exist you should create it but in a situation where it exists, what will happen is that this one, this library file will now be updated. If at all, any of the object files are being updated. That's what is going to happen. Why this R here now is, is the one that will tell you that, okay, if there are any, if the files that are inside here, if they are old compared to the files that we want to include now, then the files that are old, should be replaced by those files that are now new so let's say for instance inside all of inside this one we already have these ones here then let's say probably with time we now decide to add to this our calc add function for it to be able to add not just two numbers but three numbers right so after we must have done that of course the next thing we'll do is to convert it back into object code file so in this case, is this flag R, is this R that will now tell this AR that Kai, 
they, they announced some changes inside of this calc add.o object file. There is now a change inside here that was not in the former one. So now it will now make a add to now replace this one here that has the latest changes with the other older version. So that is what this R and C does. Now the next one here is that you are going to put include the name of your library. And in the name of your library, is of good practice to always start it or begin with lib. So that if a developer should be going through your system, he's going to understand that this is actually a library. And this lib should be followed by a descriptive name. Now, the reason why you see I used calc for all these our functions is because those are the functions I want to use for my library. And that's why I decided to name the library calc. That's more like short form of calculate. Right. So it's very good to use a descriptive name. It does not mean if you use any other name, it does not mean it will not work. Well. In fact, even if you decide not to use live, you just use a, any name and then dot A, it will still work. But it's just for the sake of good practice. You know, it's also good as a developer or as an engineer to factor in good practice. So here now, we are now going to have AR, the command AR, flag R, C, then live. To show that it's actually a library uh, file, it's a static library file. Then the name of the library. Now, I want to use the name calc to show that it's actually a library that, may, that, that will calculate, uh -huh, that is ready to calculate something. Then dot a. Now, this dot a is very, very important because just like how you have format for music, format for pictures, that's how this dot a is also more like a format for your static library. So now, do you see what I did here? You see, I did asterisk.o. So it's going to pick all the files, all the object files. That's all the files that are .o. It's going to pick them and then convert them into a library. So just like I said, since here my naming are uniform, for each of them, you have the name calc. I can ask also use calc. But the problem is that for this particular one, why I can't do that is because if I decide to use calc asterisk, is going to attempt to also add this our normal C files because our normal C files also start with calc. So to avoid trouble, I will just do for all of them that ends with dot O because I'm very sure that it's only the object files here that are ending with a dot O. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to enter. Now, if I do ls, let's let's confirm. Now you can see the library file we just created here. You can see it's libcalc.a. Right? So let me try something and see if it will work. Okay. I, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to use this command that they say you can use it to list the object that in the object file and this one. So let's try NM and see. Good. NM worked. So we can now confirm whether our library file has been created properly. Now, how do we know? You see for our calc add.object file, you see we have the add function. You, If you could remember, this is the name of our function inside add. For this one is divide, modulus, multiply, and subtract. So it means that this all this object code have actually been successfully converted or compiled into a static library. So the command you use is actually nm then the name of your static library so so i don't know before we proceed is there any question is there any question no not for me okay all right so let's continue now we have created our library file but at this point the library file we created is useless because, of course, we don't have any use for it. So let's look at how can we even make use of this library file that we just created because we just decided to create library. How can we just decide to create library file without using it? It's not possible. So now how can we use this library file? Now, of course, if you observe, all of these files contain our operations, addition, division, multiplication, modulus, subtraction. So let's say I want to now create a file right 
that is going to be able to add two numbers, subtract two numbers, divide, multiply, find the modulus, right? So let's say Vim, let's use uh, calc.c. Oh, can we use main.c? Anyone? Main.c, isn't it? Now, this main.c, of course, we want to print the, uh, the answer to our standard output. So for that, we need our include stbio.h. Now, something very important. If you remember, right, you could remember that before we even compiled all these ones into object code, and before we now use them to create a static library, we did something. We created an header file. And that header file, if we check the content of the header file, to find out that, yeah, that was where we define the prototypes of all our functions. Now, it means that for any file we are planning to use this library file with, we have to include this header file. Why? Because the header file is containing the prototypes of all these functions that we have compiled into our library file. Because without this prototype now, right? This main file will not be able to successfully get the functions from this one for you to be able to use them. So it means that back to our main file, we have to now include our header file. Include. So since the header file is in the same directory as this, our main file, so we we'll just use this, our string method to include it. So the name is calc.h. Now, of course, what we want to do is to print out. So since we are printing out, it does not matter. You can use void and you can use int. In a situation where you use int, of course, we'll be returning zero. But in a situation where you use void, we don't even need to return anything. So anyone you use is still the same thing. So we use void here, right? And then what do we want to do? We want to be able to add, subtract, divide, like that, two numbers, right? So we can define, let's define the two numbers. Let's say int x, let's say is uh, 10, then y, let's say is uh, maybe two. Now, let's say add, we want to store add. Now, what is the function for add? Now, the function for add in which we defined that presently we now have inside our static library. The name is add. Now add what? Add x and y. For subtract, I'll use sub. Now what do I want to do? I want to sub two numbers, which is x and y. Now for div, I'll use div to save division between two numbers. That's our x and y. For multiplication, I'll use more to define multiplication between two numbers, that are x and y. You can actually feed the numbers directly inside, though. Uh -huh. You must not do it. You can be feeding 10 to 10 to 10 to like that. So then finally, our modulus, we have modulus of x and y. Now, remember, since we are using all these ones to store value, and the values we are expecting from add, sub, div, mol, and mode is an integer value. So it means we have to also declare each of these ones as an integer. So we have int, add, sub, div, mol, and mode. So now that we have declared them as int, that means everything should be okay. So now what we want to do is to print the result. So for, for add, we are going to have print f. Of course, what are we printing? We are printing a number, right? And we are making it here. We'll say n. Sorry. Ah. So we have 10 plus 2, right? We'll say equal to. equal to this, then we'll take it to a new line. 
and then what we need here we add because that is the variable that is containing 10 plus 2. now we'll just copy this one and then i'll paste it here also paste it here also paste it here and finally paste it here so for this next one is subtraction so we are going to have minus and here will be sub for this next one is going to be division and here we are going to have diff for this next one is going to be multiplication or we can even use x for itself show times then here is going to be mole then the final one is going to be modulus and here is going to be mode right so sorry permit me to include semicolon in all of them well no 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 uh-huh good so now who can tell me what are we going to do next after this I think return results. Okay, good. So now, if here was an int, would have just returned zero. But since it's a void, we we'll just leave it like this. Or if you want to use int here, because I know most people are used to main having int here, then at the end here, at the end, we we'll just return zero so now if you observed you see that this one we are actually calling the add function here we are calling the subtract function we are storing the value inside of this our sub variable here we are calling the division function and we are storing the result inside our diff variable this one we are calling the multiplication function the more function and we are storing the result inside our mall variable. And here we are running the modulus function. We are now storing the result inside our mode variable. So why all these printf? They're actually printing them out to the standard output. So now as it is here, if we say we want to run our main file, right? You know, of course, before we run our main file, we have to compile it. Now, if we decide to compile our main file, see what is going to happen. Main.c, right? Dash O main. Let's see what we have. Now, do you see the errors is giving us? You see, it's say error called object add is not a function or function pointer, right? So who can tell me why is it giving us all these errors? So why is it giving us all these errors? I'm waiting. Oh. Okay. Since you people don't want to say anything, no problem. Now, if you remember what we have done thus far, right? Truly, truly, all these functions, right? We have converted them into object code and then now brought them everything. Now you create a library. We now created a library using those object code. But before we can be able to use those functions inside our main.c, we have to link this library with our main.c file because this is where we are expecting to use them, right? But now all of them, all what we need, they're actually inside of this library file. So for we to be able to use this, all these functions stated inside main.c, which have 
object code inside of this place, we have to link this main.c and this static library together. Now, the question now is, how do we link them? Good. That is where the linking command comes in. Now, for you to link a file with an uh, with a library, a static library file, this is the command you make use of. Your GCC, the name of your main program. Now, the name of our main program here is main.c. So here, have to be the name of your main program. If the main, name of my main program were to be, let's say, calculator.c, that's all will be here, calculator.c. Then you have flag L dot. Now, there's a reason for this dot, and there's a reason for this flag L. Now, if you look at through this one, it says the flag L tells the linker that libraries might be found in the present directory which is why it is followed by a full stop. So this full stop now is trying to tell the linker, the guy, linker, you know, flag L is for linker. Linker, search in this directory for any uh, library file. Now, search for, what is the name of the library file? Here, this flag L, this is flag capital letter L. This is flag small letter L. Because for this one, if you don't include this one now, right? It might not search in that directory. It might go and search in the normal place where it normally searches for file, right? Which is not what we want. What we want is for it to search in this directory, our present directory, where we are presently, for any static library file. So that is what this one means, this full stop you are seeing. Then this flag L, this is a small letter L. This is capital letter L. This is small letter L. Now, this small letter L, Let's see. It says, uh, oh, 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 I'm not missing anything. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Ah, this is serious. So, you see, I even missed something. And, but, but no problem. No problem. It's all right. So, this small letter L now, that's where you are now trying to tell you that link this file. This one we search for any library file in the present directory, this one will specify the file. So it's more like link the static library. And once you get to this point, the name of your static library, you are supposed to remove the precept and the, what did they, sorry, the prefix and the suffix. I believe we know prefix and suffix. Prefix, that's anything before the name of the file then suffix anything after it. And the reason being that the linker itself will automatically bring back this lib as a prefix and bring back this dot a as a, suff uh, as a, as a suffix. It will automatically put it itself before compiling into your main executable program. So that's why you have to remove it so that to avoid any form of error or mistakes. So if you read here, right, it says, I was thinking I wrote all those things. Over. Hey, I need to go and rewrite this place. I was thinking I stated it. I was supposed to state it. Okay, yes, it says, this will create a program called main using the main.c file and any symbols, that's functions, variables. It, says, it requires from the calc static library. The prefix lib that we used for the library file that is lib calc and the suffix dot a is not included when mentioning the library on the link command. And this is because the linker itself attaches this part back to the name of the library to create a name of a file to look for. So that's what I was trying to explain that the linker itself, we attach the lib and also the dot a back to this one. So it's best for you to remove lib and dot a and just state the main name of your library so if we are to run this command now we have gcc now what is the file we want to link with our library file this is the file we want to link which is what main dot c right now flag capital letter l dot i've already explained this this one is, is telling the linker that search in the present 
This dot means in this present directory or this present location, search for any library file. Now, what is the name of the library file? Flag, small letter L. Now, the name of the library file, our library file here is libcalc.a. But since the linker itself do append the name at the front, which is the prefix, and the name at the back, the format at the back, which is the suffix. So we are just going to feed it with just the main name here, which is the calc. And then flag O, and then the name of our output. We want the output to be called main. It mustn't be main, no. it can be called anything, actually. Yeah. So, but here I'm just using main for the sake of uniformity between our main program and the executable. So now, once you have in, inserted the command, you press enter. So, what do we have? Uh, we are still having the same command. Uh, what could be the issue? So, let's see what is saying here. We say error conflicting types for diff have extend diff. Okay. Mm. Okay, because of this, this is my standard lib. So let's remove standard lib from our header file and see. So let's try it again. And still the same thing. Say unknown conversion type character. Um, but it's not supposed to complain here now. Mode declared here. Declared here. Okay. So this is what we are going to do. Um, let's go back to our main file. Let's rename all these variables. I think this way they are having issues. The naming, probably because of it's having the same name with the function. So now let's call this one one that's more like result one so that means here what we are going to have here will be res one then let's name this one res two that simply means result res three or to make it descriptive let's do it this way um this one should be Results add. This one should be result subtract. This one should be result. Should we say divide? Then result multiply. Then result modulus. So what we are going to have here is result add. And then here too. Okay. Result sub. Result diff. Result diff. And here too. Result multiply. Result multiply. Result modulus. Is all modulus. All right. So let's try again and see. All right. We just have one more issue now. So it says unknown conversion type character. So, uh, but it's not supposed to give us this error. Okay. I think this one is what is affecting it. So if that's the case, let's let's do away with it. I think that's what is confusing it. So. Here, let's just use mode. Yes, 10 modulus 2. So now let's try again. So now, if you look at it, let's confirm. Now, if you check, you see that we have now created an executable file. And how do we do that? By combining our main file and then linking it together with our static library. So now let's execute this main file. Now, from what we have inside our main file, right? What we are expecting is that we, it should give us, we should print out the result of addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, uh, and then modulus. So let's confirm. Let's run it dot slash main. 
Now, what do we see? Addition, 10 plus 2, we give you 12. 10 minus 2, we give you 8. 10 divided by 2, we give you 5. 10 multiplied by 2, we give us 20, of course. Then 10 modulus 2 is 0. Yes, because 10 divided by 2 does not have remainder. No modulus returns the remainder after division. So, but 10 divided by 2 is actually 5, but remainder 0. There are no remainder. So, you see, this is what uh, we get. So, this is how you can actually apply your static library. Yes, this is how you can apply your static library to... You can use it, actually. Now, this same static library, we can still create another file, right? Let's say we have another file. Mm. Uh, let's say vim main one. Let's call it main one dot c. And let's say here, right? Let's include stdio first. Stdio dot h. So let's say void main. Void. And let's say here what we just want, right? Int add result. We just want to add numbers together, right? We just want to add two numbers together. So we can say, okay, add result now will be equal to um, add. We can call the add function that is in the library file. Add what? Let's say add uh, 45 and maybe 9. Yes, 45 and 9. Right? Then print f result will be equal to percentage D. So then add result. So now, if you look at this function, right, let's say ordinarily, hmm, let's say we want to main one dot C, let's say we want to compile it, flag O, calc, let's name it calc. Now you see, it will return an error. Why? Because we have not actually, there's no place inside the function where we have declared our add. But you, if you remember, you know that in this our library file, right, we already have a function called add. So we can, instead of it to now come into this, our main one.c file and start creating an add function again. Since we have had it here already, we can just link this, our main one.c file and this, our library. So once we do that, this, our main one.c file can or we'll be able to take advantage of the add function that is inside this, our library file and it's going to work properly. So we are going to link it. Now, in linking it, we use the same command, but this time around, our file is main 1.c, right? And then we want our executable to be called add. Yes, because it's only addition we are we need, or it's only the addition we are printing out in the main 1.c. So we'll run it. So what does it say? It says implicit declaration of function add. Uh, What are we missing? What are we missing? Okay, ah, that's why I say you people can should unmute your mic so that we'll be brainstorming together. I I I I forgot to include the header file. So we say our header file is what I think we say is calc.h. As the, the header file where our add function is defined. Now, normally, if we still say GCC, right? Let's say without linking. Let's see what we happen. You see, it's not agreeing to link, but it's not agreeing to, to because why? We have not defined the add function inside of this. So, but if we can link it with our static library file, which contains the add function, you see what we are going to have now, okay? So we have this, so let's run it. So you see it has run successful. You can see that we now have our executable add. So let's run the executable and see. So you can see result 54. Let's even see what is inside the, the main file, the one we added. 
So you can see that what we have is 45 and 9. So when you do 45 plus 9, you see it will give you 54. So that is one advantage of library file. So you can see only one file can actually serve for different programs. Now, if I like, I can do a program that, can, that only subtracts. I can do another one that only divides. I can do another one that only find modulus. Like that, what I just need to do is just to be linking it with the same file, and I'll have my result. So that is just the main advantage or purpose of your static library files. So is there any question? You've just left me. I was just talking, talking, talking. No problem. So any question, please? Ha. Your people are hearing me. Yeah, you know, I think we can make progress since no one is. Okay. Okay. So comment. So that is the, the basic thing about the static. Mm, a library right this this one is not something that is very necessary it's just a good to know knowledge the importance of linking order yeah so so i think that is everything you need to know about static library like really yeah that's everything you need to know about static library and how they are being applied you know if you look at the tax in the in our ELA, in, our intranet, you find out that it was more of how you you get the object files and then how you now create your library from the object files. But it does not really do much on how to actually apply it and the rest. So that's why I decided to go this route so that we will, we will even see how useful this library file can be. All right, so I think we have come to the end of the classroom. Oh, really? So soon? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we took almost an hour and 10 minutes. No, and 20 minutes. Because we started, I think, 11 minutes after. Sure. It's been comprehensive, so we're, we're waiting to enjoy more. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I, I, but I hope like we all understand. I don't know why the rest are not speaking. Or maybe they are mic yes. between Chris. Yes, we understand. So I was trying to code along um, with you. Okay. And, um, I experienced some errors, so I'm trying to debug and then to resolve uh, it, right? Yeah, resolve it myself. But I'll go back oh. to the videos and then the article and then ensure that okay, I'm able. That okay that's that's good that's that's wonderful that's good so any other person this one meeting notes taker the makatsu bonus ventures they, i don't know they're all quiet oh, it's all right oh it seems nobody else have any questions so no problem I think we have come to the end of our class. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will have yeah, no we will share the recording on the platform too and revisit what you just shared with us in the course of the All right. weekend. All so, right. So All right. when are we having you again? That I don't really know. That would depend on if I'm chance, low air legs is everybody they are hitting on the head, though, on the hand, though, on the leg, go everywhere. That's very <laughs> so, nice. but, That's but nice. if I'm chanced, yeah, if I'm chanced, then I, I'll reach out to uh, somewhere so that probably if you can fix uh, a class on another concept, so I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll try my best to see what I can do. No, we are still learning, even the static libraries. I believe we are still working on one more. Please. Yeah, can you share the link to what, what, what you call where your resources? Yeah. Gideon, Gideon, thank you. You're Gideon. welcome. Yes, You're welcome. So the link, I don't know. Uh, I think somewhere I've shared it on the group already. 
If you check the oh. last two days, that's to the article, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And also yeah. where you should uh, see compilation stages. Okay, okay, see compilation stages, that's true. Yes. So let me let me share it on the chat box. Probably you can access it now. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, let me let me share it for the static libraries too. So you can go through my my blog, although there are still many things I, I really want to write on, but because of time constraint, but at least there are quite some number of things that you can pick up, like very explanatory pointers, function, pointers, struct, array, string, so like that. So you can go through them. I make sure I break down stuffs to the bare minimum. So I believe if you go through, if you're having issues with any of these things, you go through the article, you get more understanding of it and the rest. That would be, be great for us. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Too. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So have a nice day. Let me go back to doing hard things. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a pleasant All right, weekend. Good night. All right. And you too. Thank you. Uh, welcome.